Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. It's the Caribbean Bookworm and in this video I will be giving you a book review for Physics and Philosophy written by Werner Heisenberg. So before we get started, if you're new here, welcome to the channel. Um, typically this is a bookish and sciencey channels, although most recently I've been posting mainly a lot of sciencey contents, but thankfully I've been able to get back a little bit into reading. So both physics and non-fiction stuff, as well as fiction material. So I'm slowly getting out those reviews now for like book, actual bookish material on this channel. So if you're curious about stuff like that, both non-fiction books, as well as just fiction material, classics, etc then hang around stay tuned because a lot of that content is about to come and feel free to hit the like button if you like this and subscribe if you want to see more content along these lines so without further ado let's get into our review so this book right here is a book that was originally published in 1958 and was written as you can see by Werner Heisenberg and that is a very important detail Werner Heisenberg was one of the pioneers of quantum theory and around the late 20s he and Schrodinger came up with two of the main formalisms or descriptions you could say of describing the thing that we now call quantum mechanics. Um, Schrodinger came up with the famous wave um, mechanics formalism, which talked more about wave functions, whereas Heisenberg um, went on about it in a more matrix formalism of the theory, which included some fancy math, basically linear algebra, if you've seen that before. Um, but regardless, Werner Heisenberg has made numerous, you could say, contributions to the field, even after his um, important contribution when it came to quantum mechanics mechanics. Um, so him writing this book was no surprise because the book itself, the topic that it is about, is in essence, it truthfully, it is more or less a history of how quantum mechanics came to be as well as what it's mainly used for, at least up till the time of his writing this book. Um, and that's very interesting. It's basically like a history of quantum mechanics as seen by one of the pioneers and leading people in the field and kind of his experiences as well, like kind of working in the field and seeing it change as the years went on. Um, so by that means, I think that this book is actually rather interesting. Um, to give the punchline immediately, which I usually leave for the end, I gave this book a four out of five stars on Goodreads. Um, but truthfully, I would have realistically given it something like a 3.5 stars out of 5 on Goodreads for reasons that I will mention as I go into the pros and cons. Um, but in general, this book is great also um, because it's not only about the physics, but also he actually thinks a little bit more thoroughly about these ideas, especially of quantum mechanics, which kind of puts into question a lot of things which um, we take for granted, like determinism, for example. We think that by knowing, for example, the starting values of something like where something is located exactly at what speed it is moving or not moving and all of these things um, to be the fixed things which if we know then how the laws of physics dictate something to behave like the, the motion of a ball or anything along those lines that we can very accurately predict the position for example of the ball or any other thing about our physical system to the most precise details because we really trust our physical theories and we have this very exact you could say um interpretation of seeing the world around us and what physics actually is whereas quantum mechanics kind of flipped that on its head because it became this probabilistic theory or this non-deterministic thing and i think this to a large extent kind of inspired um heisenberg amongst i think many others to think about the philosophical underpinnings of quantum mechanics and what it actually implies about our real world if this probabilistic description actually does tell us things that we can measure in labs so in a nutshell i bought this book because i wanted to learn about the various interpretations of quantum mechanics because i bought it at a time at which I was very curious. I didn't learn quantum mechanics for the first time. I had learned it for quite a bit already at that point um, by university courses and things like that. Um, but I bought it because I was starting to think a little bit more about what are the various interpretations of the theory and um, just wanted to understand some of the debates going on a little bit more about it. So I thought about either getting Helgo Helgoland by Carlo Rovelli or this book and this book kind of won the lottery for me. 
reading. So without further ado, let's actually jump into the pros and cons of the book. So the main pros I have with the book are three. Um, starting with the first one being that Heisenberg does a very nice job describing the physics in this book, like describing the ideas behind the developments of quantum mechanics, as well as its applications in various other fields. And he does so, most importantly, I think I should mention, without any equations. Like I say that sometimes with books. For example, in a very recent video, I said that a biography book does not have any, um, you could say, any equations. And that was unfortunately a little bit of a lie. It wasn't true. It had some equations written in it, but it weren't. It wasn't things that you needed to be like a math whiz or something to kind of figure out. But this one, very truthfully, does not have any equations and that's incredible he kind of sometimes in words explain what equations would mean like for example einstein's e equals mc squared like he would talk about it but mainly because it's such an important you could say like thing to talk about so he tries to mainly focus on concept instead of like mathematics and i think that's great i think that shows i think the power in this man's understanding that he had for physics and the developments that were happening at the time because in this book besides talking about quantum mechanics there's a whole chapter for example dedicated purely on einstein's theories of relativity and you can see him describing both special relativity the physics of things moving very fast as well as general relativity the things of um, the physics of things having for example large gravitational fields and things like that and space-time curvature he talks about all of these things in english basically without kind of alluding too much or even at all to the mathematics and that's really incredible and also he keeps historical context in mind that he keeps all of the facts that um why people were thinking in a particular direction or thinking of a particular way in mind and i think that's great and a fun thing to note about the in the case of content the actual physics content of this when he was talking especially about relativity you can kind of see that this book is a product of its time because Heisenberg himself was not very, you could say, convinced of the merit that general relativity may have. He did see that it was promising to some extent because relativity, even back then, could predict, like general relativity, could predict some astronomical anomalies, such as most impressively, the, um, you could say, the perihelion of Mercury kind of shifting over the sky. So these distances of Mercury kind of deviating from what you typically calculate with Newtonian mechanics. Um, so that was one of the strongest, you could say a little bit of hints that general relativity might have something, of course, with the eclipse observations and stuff like that as well. Um, but you could see that Heisenberg was still a little bit on the fence. He was thinking that, okay, we should keep an eye out for this thing, but we shouldn't fully invest in it yet. And it's interesting, it's interesting to see that with the lens that we have now, because we know now that there are so many other evidences for general relativity, with gravitational waves and so many other things so but it's interesting to see basically that he, um, you could say to see the frame of mind that he was in back then also you can also see the excitement at which he had for fields that were very promising in his time and to some extent still um, for example in particle physics you could see that um, he was very excited that for example the experiments were being built and at the time CERN was already starting to be in development so um, people were excited at the time for new ways of testing fundamental theories of at the time things like quantum electrodynamics and these theories which unifies quantum mechanics um, with relativity and the predictions that came out of them um, so you can see the excitement basically that he had that okay this is going to open a whole new realm of physics because we're going to have these big experiments that can kind of look out for things that help us probe maybe scales even smaller than the atomic scales which at the time was already after the early developments of quantum mechanics, an exciting thing for physicists like nuclear physics, because right after the foundations of quantum mechanics and how that resolved some things from atomic physics like spectroscopy, um, people became more curious to study and probe, you could say, the nuclei of atoms. And 
things of course from that nature led to various development that even had some practical applications during wartime. So you can see that these things heavily influenced the way he constructed his narrative and um, how we even saw outlooks you could say for further applications of quantum mechanics in the future. But also very interestingly and this will be the last thing I will talk about this point um, also how we kind of express as a cautionary tale of not applying certain physical frameworks to everything like there's a part in this book where he talks about um wrongly applying um you could say quantum mechanics to certain very 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 macroscopic objects and how that leads to nonsensical answer or just answers that are not physically relevant because you can't really test these kind of predictions on certain scales and i think that's a very very interesting cautionary tale that is still quite applicable till this day. But nevertheless, that first point about him accurately describing the physics, especially I wanted to say verbally, but let's say with words, like just written words, it's impressive and a very strong reason to give this book a shot. The second main pro I had with a book is um, its attention to philosophy, because as the title suggests, it's also supposed to be a little bit about philosophy. Um, and that is very much true. For at least three chapters or so, he very much focuses on not just um, what I alluded to earlier in the video, like the thing about determinism and non-determinism, but he actually dives deeply into the, um, you could say, the foundations of certain classical philosophers like Descartes and some of the Hellenistic philosophers. So he really tries to unpack how people thought about, for example, things like matter, um, what they're made of in this very rudimentary classical way of thinking, um, and really try to use formal, you could say, philosophical language and deduction to kind of talk about these things and slowly, while establishing the framework of philosophy, start applying them to concepts in physics, both classical physics and modern physics for his time. And that is very great, but I will say that it's going to tie into one of my cons that is very dense, but um, to stick to the pro for now, I think it will be heavily appreciated by someone with a very humanities focused background or especially from the humanities with a very philosophy focused background that can handle that, you could say, way of going about things. It's less of something for me, but I think someone who reads the title and gets drawn in it because they're curious that they're going to get a little bit of philosophy also incorporated in their physics, um, it does that job. Like, it doesn't lie. Like, it actually gives you philosophy as it's related, particularly to quantum mechanics. So um, I think for that reason, you definitely want to, again, give it a shot. And um, lastly, the last pro I have, which is a quick one, is that it is short in page size. Like As you can see me holding it in my hand, it is not that it's not a long book at all. It's a very, very, very small one. But as with most philosophy books, they're running, not even running joke, honestly, is the truth at this point. Um, the shorter they are, the kind of more worried one should be, um, because typically with philosophy, any it doesn't matter the length size or the page count of the book. If it's dense, you will still take quite a bit to go through it if you really want to kind of digest the ideas, because it will take time to go through chapters, to go through pages, and really take it in. Um, so with that, I can naturally segue into the con section. And the first con that I have is exactly what I am currently talking about. It is that this book can be very dense. Um, the degree at which it might be dense depends, again, on your background. If you're someone with a philosophy background, I think the philosophy sections may be an easier follow for you because you'd see things that you're very familiar with. Um, for me, that wasn't the case. Um, even though I've taken maybe about two philosophy courses and read very surface level about philosophy, it wasn't my strong suit um, because it's not the way I naturally think. Like you could say I don't think in a particular way that you need to think to properly kind of be able to navigate the terrain of philosophy. Um, so I don't think with my very superficial understanding that I could have really benefited from all of the very hard philosophical discussions that Heisenberg very impressively kind of went through. Um, so um, for that, that, those bits were very dense for me. But I think for someone that doesn't have a strong physics background, that doesn't have the intuitive feeling of the historical developments of these ideas and things like that, I think that the physics parts can be as daunting perhaps for them as the philosophy parts were for me. So that is something to keep in mind. 
The second and last main con that I had with this book was the arrangement of the chapters. Like the chapters, they're not always consistent with what he's talking about. And I think when I took a peek on Goodreads, because I did, and I added my review on there as well, um, I saw that the complaint that some people had was also this, and I do agree with them. Um, and that is that um, basically that this the order of the chapters are really bad, honestly. Because, for example, in one of the early chapters, he talks about the Copenhagen interpretation, which is a very commonly accepted way of thinking about quantum mechanics. Um, but there are many arguments that kind of criticize the Copenhagen interpretation. Um, and he has a chapter dedicated purely on that, but that is all the way in one of the last chapters of this book, um, which is unfortunate um, because I think those two chapters kind of tie in nicely together. But he took a break after introducing the Copenhagen interpretation to talk about many of the other applications of quantum mechanics and other bits like philosophy and relativity before getting back to the Copenhagen interpretation and interpretations of quantum mechanics in general. Um, so there are other examples of that where one chapter would not nicely follow the other, but he doesn't put them together. So it's, yeah, that's very messy, honestly. So for that reason, I can't really say that it's the most intuitive read um, because of that. But when he does address those chapters, it is still worthwhile to read. And also, I thought that perhaps you could skip the chapter, for example, go from Copenhagen straight to the other one. But it does seem like he referred to some of the chapters like before, like in the middle of the two chapters. So it did. I thought that maybe this was like a collection of small essays that he wrote and they made it all into a book. But not really. This was like the way that he himself structured the book. Not very intuitive, but it does help to still go through the thing chronologically is what I want to say. So in general, this book, which I gave, as I mentioned before, a 3.5 out of 5 on Goodreads, technically, even though it's a 4.4 4 out of 5, if you go and see it, um, it's good. It's great, especially, I think, if you have seen or heard about these things in physics before, for example, because it gives you context, it gives you insight because it's someone that was there, basically, that lived through this time. Um, and it also gives you something to think about. This really concise book is actually really, really good. I think it complements um, formally studying the material or after you read books about the physics and stuff like that to kind of think about what it implies, what it means, basically. Like this is the one which gives you dinner table conversations, basically. So with that, I cannot furthermore recommend this book. I highly suggest you give it a shot. It, even though it looks short, it might not be a quick read, but it is worth your time and energy, I would say. So yeah, that was my review for Physics and Philosophy. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you've read it or if you read other books along these lines, I'd be curious to hear it down in the comment section. I will also be shortly, I hope, uploading um, reviews for other things that I read already. Um, so I look forward to giving you guys more bookish content alongside my sciencey ones. So stay tuned and I hope to see you all very, very soon. Bye-bye.